So it's um, 10 a.m. here in uh, Tenerife. We're in the south of Tenerife. Uh, and I'm just uh, putting some uh, gas in my car. And then we're headed out to visit Masca and Punta de Teno and the northern part, maybe Garachico, Orotava, I don't know. Uh, just wanted to give you an update how it's been. We've been here since 26th of September. We're gonna give you uh, an update what we've been doing, how are the kids in school and stuff like this. What I'm working, what's Christina working and how we are fitting and adapting our life here in Tenerife. As you can see, I wear a t-shirt. It's almost December. Uh, it's unusually cloudy today here in the south, but it's one of those days, you know? So stay tuned and see you in a bit. So what have we been doing since we landed on the island? That was two, exactly two months ago. Well, the first thing we did went to our Airbnb. We booked an Airbnb and I suggest everybody who moves here should book in advance uh, a flat. We booked it for a month, the because... cheapest we could we could find. It was also necessary uh, because in, in this one month we started to look for flats in Santa Cruz and it was not easy. If you look for a flat, you have to consider some aspects. First is that flat owners are very skeptical. They pretty much don't rent a flat without a work contract. There is a solution also to this. Doesn't work always, but if you're willing to pay in advance the rent, like maybe six months to one year, there are some flat owners that are willing to rent you the apartment. This could give them a sense of uh, safety. An agent and through the agent we managed <clears throat> to secure our flat. We paid one year in advance in Santa Cruz. We found it on, I think, Infocasa. Milanuncios. Milanuncios, Infocasa. There are several websites where you can search for flats. Yeah, we Google Translate and everything and all the inquiries we sent out for, uh, for flats uh, we translate it to Spanish. <clears throat> this is the first step. You, you you really have to be proactive to search for a flat. And here comes the paperwork. Before you rent the flat, you have to have the NIE. And there are two kinds of NIE, white NIE and uh, green NIE. With the white NIE, you can open a bank account. You can also buy um, a, car. A, a car, a SIM card, like for phone, internet contract. You can do all this with the white NIE. If you don't have a NIE, it's not possible. Mm. You go to the local police station, you fill out a form, and then you wait for your NIE. It takes, the whole process for us took like a week. After the NIE, you have to secure yourself the empadronamiento. Empadronamiento. <laughs> yes, empadronamiento means basically that uh, the owner of the flat is guaranteeing that you live there and that is, this is your uh, residency. So you have like a permanent address in Spain. You have to go to the city hall yeah. for this? Uh, uh, you cannot go without uh, an appointment, so you have to make an online uh, appointment. It's called here a cita. And you wait. Then you wait. We're still waiting for our uh, empadronamiento papers. I kind of Original. find out that this is a bureaucracy here. So you need empadronamiento. Empadronamiento. Nie. Nie. Tarjeta de salud. Social security number. So these are the four things that you need in order to be uh, like legal here. To get the tarjeta de... Salud. Public insurance. Public insurance. Health insurance. You you have to be employed or self-employed because otherwise you don't get it. This is how it works. You go, you go to a center, center de salud in your area. This is like a hospital or clinic in your area, Centro de Salud. <clears throat> we just Googled it. And then you have to go to the information and you say, I need tarjeta de salud. These are my papers, this is everything and they will fill the forms for you and you will sign and 
<clears throat> but, but you just have to get there. <laughs> yeah, but you cannot get tarjeta de salud if you don't have your social security number. And you cannot have your social security number if you're not employed or you don't have a like self-employed, autonomo. Or, In my yeah. case, they found me that I am employed because uh, the company that I work for already um, <clears throat> applied for my so social security number and I was in the system. So it was easy for me to get my tarjeta de salud and also for the kids. First, you have to go, you have to have the social security number, then you get the tarjeta de salud. So it's like a devil's circle. Uh, that's why we've waited until now to get our um, health cards in order to put our kids in school. If you have kids, the process of putting your kids in school is very easy. You just go to your nearest school and you say what age they are, so they will put them in the according classes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if they speak or not, don't speak Spanish, they, mm -hmm. they'll get some mentoring. They, they are taken care of in terms of learning the language. The kids here are very, very open and very friendly. So all of our three kids, um, they go to public schools. They go to public schools and Spanish-speaking schools. This is the second week they're in school or the third. Second. Second, second. okay. Second full four. Yes, and they feel pretty good. So no issues, no bullying, no nothing. They are, they were very welcomed. Also the teachers. So, chapeau. 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 If you want to work <clears throat> here, I guess if you have like language no knowledge except English for example if you speak German or Norwegian or Italian or Romanian or whatever you can work like from home teletrabajo I think this is the most easiest way to secure your a job here in the Canary Island remote and for that you in my case I searched for uh, Spanish companies on Glassdoor. So I searched for companies that hire in Spain people that speak German. And I found two of them. One is called WebHelp and the other one is called Serem. WebHelp and Serem. And they're constantly looking for German speakers. Uh, also here, but also in Spain. For uh, IT support for various projects. So I work for a project in IT support. Other than that, um, from what I've seen and from what we've seen, there's not ma there's not many jobs here if you don't speak Spanish. You have to plan in advance, like okay, looking for a job in advance, already you know laying laying the foundations, talking with companies. Well, I'm moving there. I moved to Spain. I moved to uh, the Canary Islands. So how we've been doing in terms of accommodating and um, integrating? Not a lot going on. I mean, I work from 8 to 5, mm -hmm. I only have the weekend off and in the weekend usually we go to the beach or spend time with the kids, so it's pretty much routine until now. We didn't manage to um, make like local friends, Spanish locals here. I think also it takes a little time because, yeah, yeah the adjustment, the language, the kids are going to school, everything is new. Do we like it? Yes, we love it. I mean, we compare it to Austria. Of course, we also love Austria, but life here is slow, it's different, you know, the weather is extremely nice. I think this is the first time actually that we've seen rain or the second time. We, it's gorgeous. Yeah, we like the weather a lot. Uh, we drove from Masca to Las Teresitas. This is a beach in the northern part of the island not very far from where we live in Santa Cruz I think maybe 15 minutes it's empty because it's cloudy today a bit, so a bit chilly a bit chilly I mean chilly it means like 17 to 18 degrees in the south there were 23 degrees Celsius so if you're a resident here you get a 75 up to 75 percent discount for flights and entries to various uh, uh, like museums and like parks uh, to the zoo and you can travel between the islands also uh, with a with this huge discount and also you can fly to the peninsula but overall we think it's the perfect we made the perfect choice so far it's only been two months so we still have to compare a little bit more in the future 
but one main aspect is that it's beautiful weather so even now it's 25th of of November and I'm still able to wear a t-shirt this is the thing that I really like so that you don't have to go outside putting your jacket on and everything even if it's winter and this is very good our kids go to school in short pants uh, or a t-shirt um, and that's very good we do not realize how how great it is and comfortable and comfortable how easy it is bit <laughs> Talking on me. One aspect that we also like is the people. Amazing, amazing. People here are so friendly. Even you know they make you feel like really special or comfortable. I mean, uh, this week uh, a neighbor, an elderly lady, saw saw us too that we come out of the the building and she approached us and asked us in spanish we understood something and said okay who are you new neighbors if you need anything i'm living in, in the third floor just come and uh, we're happy that you're here and welcome and you know feel special like okay what's another thing that you like here and tell me if I would say the food, but I'm not used to the food here, not anyway, not now, but I like the prices. Uh, I think it's, it's fair to say that the prices here are maybe 20% cheaper than in Vienna or Austria for that matter. Um, you can still buy a loaf of bread with 80 cents here which is very nice uh, because we eat a lot of bread uh, you can buy shrimps or langustinas with i think it was a promotion yesterday in superdino 850 850 uh, a kilogram so this is also very good what's another thing that we like oh of course we like we like it here that uh, they don't have lockdowns and it's it feels like you know a normal a normal, a normal life normality. like corona isn't even here you can still f see it because literally everybody walks with a mask on although it's not mandatory uh, so it reminds you you know it's we're still in a pandemic but people don't act like it you know it, they are very relaxed and there's no lockdown people can still go out uh, no one checks your green pass or if you're vaccinated even in, even in school they don't test the they kids. They don't test the kids in school. Just, they just have to wear the mask. I've been to the hospital. No one asked us about the green certificate or if we are tested or if we are vaccinated. So, you know, it makes you feel normal. You, it makes you feel like, okay, everything's going in the right direction. Uh, also, we like the late hours shops are open, even on Sunday. Um, like me, shops, I mean gro groceries. Sometimes you forget like to buy some something for your kids to to have the next day in school. So on Sunday, always, always, yeah. there's always a thing you don't have. So on Sunday, definitely this helps. A friend. A friend I'm not gonna answer. I'm not gonna answer because I have a vlog to do. I'm gonna answer later. Florine diversity this is another aspect that we like i mean we can choose almost every weekend to go somewhere else to visit another beach uh last sunday we visited a very beautiful botanical garden in puerto de la cruz every weekend you can do something different the, the diversity here is huge you can go up to the mountain to Teide if you want to feel a bit a bit uh, chilly or you can go in the south, uh, have a nice day at the beach, a sunny day at the beach, uh, or just uh, stroll around the capital in the city. It's very vibrant at night. It, it has a lot of potential. Yes, it has a lot of potential, a lot of shops. You feel like in Europe, even though you're, you're most likely in Africa, because uh, Africa is not very far from here. Okay, what we don't like. We don't like anything. <laughs> what I don't like is that shops here open at very nine late. <laughs> very late so if, even christina like she she wakes what? up 
Yeah, even Chris. Ah, uh, they Chris, open up in the morning. Yeah, they up, open okay. up in the morning, maybe nine or ten. Eight thirty. Yeah, so Christina wakes up at six, and uh, yeah, this is uh, something we don't really like. Yeah. yeah, so far, I mean, so far we like pretty much everything because uh, we didn't have time to compare. Really, two months is not enough to say, okay, I stumble upon this situation and I, and I don't like it. Everybody's friendly. You know, we feel like in Europe, it's not. Uh, you know, Santa Cruz has is even a tram, so a tram goes to Santa Cruz and buses and everything. So it's not like we miss Vienna in terms of infrastructure or. What do we think about the future or our perspectives here? We are just in the phase where we try to settle in, try to blend in. Uh, we miss our friends, of course, family a lot. We have some friends here, yeah, we have some friends here, of course. I mean, we have a couple of uh, friends here, uh, but we don't have family here. The lookout for us or the perspective for us is that we stay here at least one year and see how things turns out, turn out also in terms of uh, Christina expanding her business here with photography and me with videography. And if things go well, maybe we'll draw a line after one year and see where we are, how the kids are doing, how we are doing here. And if, if we feel, okay, it's time to move on, then we will move on. If not, we will stay here. So this is our feedback after two months of Tenerife. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like it and subscribe it. Thanks for watching. And as soon as I have, or we have more time, we're gonna make another, another vlog and until then, see you. See ya.